Hi there, my name is Nelly. Welcome to the fifth lesson in this series on geometrical optics, where we have been finding out more about light. We have been looking at the properties of reflection over the last couple of lessons, and today we are going to conclude our study on the reflection of light. So far, we've looked at the images formed when light is reflected off straight mirrors. Now we will look at mirrors that are not straight. By the end of today's lesson, you will be able to draw the ray diagram for a convex and a concave mirror and explain how images are formed in convex and concave mirrors. In this mirror, I look much taller and thinner, but in this mirror, I look much shorter and fatter than I really am. These mirrors aren't straight. They are all curved in different places. The reason my image looks so funny and strange is because of the curve in the mirror. I'm sure you'll agree that I certainly do look funny in some of these mirrors. You can make your own funny mirror too. You need to have a mirror that is quite flexible and is easy to bend. A way to do this is to take a large piece of aluminium foil and bend it around different rounded objects like this. Aluminium foil is quite shiny and you'll be able to see a reflection in it. This will be our mirror. Okay, now look into the mirror. Make sure it is as straight as possible. What do you see? You should see a fairly normal image of yourself in the mirror. This is exactly what we expected to see. Now let's try a mirror where the ends are moved away from you. To do this, Take a balloon and bend the foil carefully around the curve of the balloon, like I have done. What do you expect to see this time? Your face should now look bigger than it normally is and also a bit funny. <laughs> okay, let's try a mirror that bends in the opposite direction. To do this, carefully put the foil into a large bowl, curving it along the inside of the bowl. Now your face should look much smaller than before. The question we need to answer is, why does the image you see change when the mirror is bent? Can you think of a possible explanation? Well, we know that we see images in mirrors because of the reflection of light. So when the image changes, it must have something to do with the way the light is being reflected off the mirror. Let's go to the lab and see if we can find an explanation. Hello there guys, today we're going to discover why your face looks so funny in a curved or bent mirror. We're going to be using a very funky equipment, it's called a light ray box and a couple of curved mirrors. But specifically, we're going to be looking at the concave and the convex mirrors. Now a convex mirror, it's a mirror that bends towards you. And a concave mirror, it's a mirror that bends away from you, almost like it's causing a cave. Now first we're going to see what happens when we light the concave mirror. Now remember, we're going to be using three light rays instead of just one. And we're going to dim our lights so that we can see the light rays properly. Now watch carefully what happens to the light rays as they are reflected. Now that's very interesting. All the light rays are reflected back at different angles. And then they come together at a point in front of the mirror. Let me show you a ray diagram to explain to you what we've just seen. Now whenever you draw a ray diagram, remember that the angle of incidence is always equal to the angle of reflection and they can be measured from the normal. And the normal is always at 90 degrees to the surface that's reflecting the light. Now as you know, we always start with the mirror. We're going to draw our concave mirror there. There we go. Now remember that we had three light rays, so we're going to look at them one at a time. Let's start with the ray that hits the mirror halfway through to that point there. Now let's see where the normal would be. And remember that the normal is always 90 degrees to the surface. So 
this light ray here actually travels on top of the normal. And because of that, the angle of incidence is zero. Now, because the angle of incidence is always equal to the angle of reflection, therefore, the angle of reflection is also zero. Very good. Now, let's draw another line on top. And you can clearly see that this line here is not hitting the mirror at 90 degrees like the first one did. But remember, we always have to determine the normal for us to measure the angles. So our normal is going to be there in a dotted line always. This angle here is the angle of incident. And remember, the angle of incident is always equal to the angle of reflection. So our angle of reflection will be this side here, equal to the angle of incident. Now, let's draw our last line at the bottom. And as you can see, it's taking the same properties as the one we drew on the top there. It doesn't hit the mirror at the middle point, and it's not in 90 degrees. And remember, we have to determine the normal, which is always 90 degrees to the surface that's reflecting the light. And now you can see our angle of incidence there. And in order to find the angle of reflection, we have to measure it from the normal, exactly the same angle as the angle of incidence, which will be over here at this point. Okay. Remember, the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. It helps us draw in the reflected ray. Now you can see from a ray diagram that if you bounce light onto a concave mirror, the rays reflect and they tend to come together onto one point. Now this point here is called the focal point of a concave mirror. And we say that light converges towards the focal point in a concave mirror. Now, let's go back to the studio. Nelly, explain to us why it's important to know the focal point. Knowing how light from the ray box travels when it strikes a curved mirror helps us explain what we see when we look into a concave mirror. When an object is placed between the focal point and the concave mirror, a very large image forms in the mirror. Light from the top of the image hits the mirror and is then reflected downwards. Remember that our brains interpret the light entering our eyes as traveling in straight lines. So we need to extend the reflected ray backwards to find where the top of the image will be. The light from the bottom of the object hits the mirror and is then reflected upwards. We now extend this reflected ray backwards and we can see the bottom of the image. Unlike a straight mirror, the image is not the same size as the object. The image formed in the concave mirror is enlarged. There is one thing that makes concave mirrors very special and unique from all other mirrors. <laughs> Have a look. Do you see that as soon as I cross some sort of boundary, the image that I see becomes inverted? Why do you think that is? Well, this is a great topic for a class discussion. You can even get some friends together and try to figure out what the ray diagram for this scenario would look like. I'll give you some clues though. Think about where you have seen an upside down or inverted image before. The boundary that I cross is the focal point of the concave mirror. Consider the difference between a real and virtual image as you solve this puzzle. Now let's go back to Aaron in the lab to see if we can learn some interesting things about light reflecting from convex mirrors. Welcome back. Now what I'm going to do is repeat the same investigation we did earlier, but now I'm going to use a convex mirror. Okay, so now I'm going to shine these three lights onto the mirror. Watch carefully what happens. See how the lights are reflecting back in different directions and not to one point this time. Now, do you think you could draw a ray diagram to explain what's happening here? Take a few moments and try. How did you get on with your ray diagram? Well, let's compare our ray diagrams. Now, just like with the concave mirror, we're going to first draw the mirror. 
we have a convex mirror there and we're going to start with the middle ray that hits the mirror in the middle there at 90 degrees. Now we know that this means that the incidence angle is zero and because the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection therefore the angle of reflection is also zero so the light bounces back straight. Let's draw the top right. There we go and clearly we can see that this is not hitting our mirror at 90 degrees like the middle line. So now in order to determine our angles we need the normal and remember it's always at 90 degrees to the surface. Dotted line there representing our normal and this angle here is the angle of incidence. Now to get the angle of reflection is the same angle on the other side of the normal and you can see that this time our light is reflected upwards and not downwards. There is our angle of reflection. Now the bottom ray has the same properties as the top ray. As you can see clearly here that it's hitting the mirror at an angle and not 90 degrees. And once again to determine our angles we need to draw the normal. Hmm. Always 90 degrees to the surface in a dotted line. And our angle of incidence is there and for us to find the angle of reflection we have to draw the same line on this side equal to that angle. And as we can see as well here our reflection is pointing downwards and not inwards and there is our angle of reflection. Now with a convex mirror to find the point where the line meet we have to extend them in the back of the mirror over here. So in order to find the focal point of a convex mirror we have to extend them and get it here which is at the back of the mirror. But how does this influence the image formed? Now listen very carefully as Nelly explains to us why. If we now look at the ray diagram we can see why the image is smaller because of the curve of the mirror, the light from the top is reflected upwards. When we extend the line backwards, we can see where the top of the image will be. The middle ray reflects straight back because it is in the middle of the mirror. So the bottom ray will reflect downward and when you extend the ray backwards, it makes the image look smaller. Now we know that convex mirrors make things look smaller. This interesting feature of convex mirrors makes them very useful in our everyday lives. For example, convex mirrors are used in shops to give a view of a large area of the shop. Convex mirrors give wide angle views, so when you look at them, you can see a large area. Another place we use convex mirrors is in cars. The side mirrors and the rear view mirror are made of a convex mirror. This is so that a large area can be seen in a small space. You have already built a device for seeing around corners using straight mirrors in a previous lesson. But some shopkeepers use convex mirrors to do the same thing. In today's task, I want you to draw an appropriate ray diagram to show why a convex mirror is more effective for seeing around corners than using flat mirrors. That's all for today. Goodbye. See you next time.